Washington Grown is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Agriculture's Specialty Crop Block Grant Program and the Washington Hospitality Association. Hi everyone, I'm Christy Gorenson and welcome to Washington Grown. Wine grapes, juice grapes, table grapes, most of us are familiar with them all. In this episode of Washington Grown, we're in the vineyard talking all about this round, delicious fruit. We'll head to the water-inspired restaurant Westward, where we'll make a pickled grape dish with Chef Josh Henderson. Frankly, that's the way it ends up in your mouth anyway, so... Yeah, exactly. All going to the same yeah. place. And Washington grapes aren't only for wine. Tomas is visiting a vineyard that specializes in Concord juice grapes. Next time you're drinking some grape juice, thank Art right here. <laughs> and we'll get a special behind-the-scenes tour of Welch's to see how they're using Washington-grown grapes for their delicious grape juice concentrate. It smells really good. Yeah, I, I love grape processing. All this and more today on Washington Grown. Gotta go fast. Hot diggity. How good is that one? Itadakimasu. Westward is a water-inspired restaurant right on the north shores of Lake Union in Seattle. It celebrates Northwest cuisines with a creative water-inspired menu. They have a really unique menu. They have great oysters. Guests can sit and enjoy their food right on the shore and can even arrive by boat, kayak, or paddleboard. I live on a houseboat actually just across the lake from here and have literally paddled here, so uh, it's, it's uh, very uh, kayak friendly. The interior is quirky and quintessentially Northwest, a design that landed the restaurant a James Beard Award nomination. Northwest shabby chic with the nautical theme going on and the water view feels like Seattle. Chef and owner Josh Henderson wants to make sure every one of his customers has a good time. Westward is a place we want you to have fun and feel like you're somewhat at a, a little bit of a Mediterranean Hamptons beach party in a way. Oh. The vibe here is obviously very whimsical and fun. We have pictures of Bill Murray up there and we have a big boat and we have the Adirondack chairs and a big fire pit. The view isn't the only thing that keeps Westward's customers happy. It's also the fresh, local, and seasonal menu. Good, fresh Northwest food, especially their seafood, is amazing. Later in the show, we'll be cooking up a popular Westward dish involving pickled grapes. Frankly, that's the way it ends up in your mouth anyway, so... Yeah, I'll go into the yeah. same place. Grapes grown in Washington aren't always just for wine. Many Washington vineyards grow Concord juice grapes. Today, I'm in Sunnyside meeting with second generation farmer Art Den Hode to learn more about the process of growing and harvesting grapes used for juice. All right, Art, so tell me, what are we seeing right here? These are Concord grapes planted on a nine foot row with the trellis being on an average of about five and a half feet. Now, these are a lot taller than I'm used to seeing. Why is that? Well, they're taller because you get better vine growth down, and also we have a bottom wire here. We can spread it out so your fruit is not congested. You know, in wine grapes, everything grows up. Your fruit's exposed. Okay. Right. Where Concord's, as you see, everything hangs down, and driving by, you don't see any fruit. That's the unique thing about it. It will still color underneath all the foliage. What is it about these grapes that'll, that'll tell you it's ready to be harvested? Sugar. 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 So how often are you testing then, every day? We usually test about twice or three times before we decide to pick a block. Gotcha. Just to, you know, you take a random sample throughout the block and then it'll tell you if that's close, then you're right. You're pretty close, you can you can go. So you hit 16 brick and then how are these things harvested? I mean, are these All machine. All machine. All machine. So these aren't hand picked anymore. No. No. <laughs> no. Art says they harvest over 500 tons of Concord grapes each year. He also grows eight different types of wine grapes. We head to another one of his vineyards to see the difference between the two. It's really cool to see the uh, the differences in like the way that they're manicured and how tidy those are compared yeah. to this. Let these guys go. <laughs> yeah, let's let them go. Yeah, see where those are all. Everything has catch wires to hold it up to right. expose the fruit, 
because you need sunlight and you need air movement in there to keep them from getting rot or whatever else can affect them. And that also is why you have drip on wine grapes. There's no water, so there's no moisture in the bunches and you can control the vigor of your vine a whole lot better. What's one of the hardest things about being a grape juice farmer? Well, one of the hardest things, actually Concord grapes are an easy crop to raise. The hardest thing is staying profitable. Art says that grapes used for juice sell for a lot less versus grapes used for wine. I ask him if there's any common misconceptions about grape juice. Well, there's a perception by some that the sugar drink is not good for you. Oh, okay, it's just not, grape juice in general, not wine, but grape juice. Grape okay. juice, yeah. But there's nothing really inherently bad about it because we're talking natural sugars and all it's of the nutrients sugar. are still there, yes. right? And it's got it's loaded with antioxidants the same as a glass of red wine is. So uh, what would you like people to know that aren't familiar with the grape juice industry, the grape juice farmer? Well, I would like them to know that the Concord grape juice is raised about as green, or you might say organic, as you can get. We're not spraying any fungicides. We're not doing any insecticides. And it's a juice that, it's heart, heart helpful. I mean, it's yeah. got a lot of antioxidants in it, so it's a good drink. And it's all natural and... It's all natural. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> well, thank you so much for the hard work that you're doing. You bet. We appreciate it. And the next time you're drinking some grape juice, thank Art right here. <laughs> Today I'm in Prosser at the Walter Clore Wine and Culinary Center. I'm meeting with Melissa Hansen, the Research Program Manager for the Washington State Wine Commission, an organization that represents all wine grape growers and each licensed winery in the state. Over a glass of wine, we're talking about the history of Washington wine growers and why Washington produces some of the best wine in the world. Well, let's kind of go back in history a little bit and tell me about how Washington wine industry got started here. The wine industry is actually closely linked to Concord grapes. Okay. Back in the early 1900s, there were little pockets of grapes, all types of grapes grown in the state. There was a very small, but it was growing, but a very small little industry. Because you can make wine out of any fruit, mm -hmm. obviously. Yeah. So it was a little different style of wine than what we drink today. Very sweet wine. Out of and the Concord out grapes. Out of the Concord grapes. Okay. And they just blended all the grapes. Mm -hmm. uh, and things were starting to grow, and then came Prohibition. 1919, Woo! Reached it to a halt. <laughs> put the brakes on. Yeah. Melissa explains that when Prohibition started, it actually created a boom for Concord grapes in Washington because homeowners were allowed to make up to 200 gallons of wine in their home without a permit. With that allowance, there was a sudden demand for grapes across the country. So Prohibition lifted and yes, wineries sprang back to life and there were about 42 right about the time when Prohibition lifted. <laughs> At that same time though, Dr. Walter Clore, who the center is named after, uh, came to WSU as a horticulturalist, and he saw potential in our state as a premium wine producer. So he was sort of our little Johnny Appleseed, yeah. and he went throughout the state and planted, worked with growers, and planted a few trials, a few grapes here and there, mm -hmm. and planted Vitus vinifera, the European grapes. Research is a cornerstone of our Washington wine industry. Because of Walter Clore's research and vision, Washington is now the second largest producing wine region in the nation with more than 900 wineries and 50 to 65,000 acres of grapes. So what's some of the research that's going on right now that, that you can talk about for the wine industry? Oh, we have, like I mentioned, there's a, about a million dollars of projects. Mm -hmm. Everything from how to fine tune the irrigation for white varieties. We, we know how to do it with red, we focus now on the white. Vineyard mechanization, obviously labor is becoming a, a big issue. So we're making sure that if you use mechanical thinners and mechanical pruners that it doesn't impact, negatively impact the quality. All of the research that we do has an overriding goal to improve wine quality. Melissa says both the Wine Commission and the industry itself facilitates and directly supports the wine research being done, which is another unique trait about Washington wine. I think we should toast to Dr. Clore, right? To Dr. Clore. And Washington wines. And Washington wines. <laughs> Coming up, we're in the kitchen at Westward, making a dish with some pickled grapes. Frankly, that's the way it ends up in your mouth anyway, so. Yeah, exactly. All going to the yeah. same place. We 
we are back on the water at Westward, a Northwest-inspired restaurant that provides a unique dining experience to each one of its guests. We have so many nooks and crannies that are, are different, whether you want to sit at the oyster bar, or you want to sit at the chef's counter and look at the, the wood oven, or you want to be on the Adirondack. Westward's prime location, eccentric decor, and fresh dishes have made it a favorite spot for the locals. This place is amazing. I come here often. One of the things I like about uh, this restaurant is the combination of kind of the salty with a little bit of the sweet. Those sweet and salty combination dishes come from incorporating unlikely foods such as grapes. We use a fair amount of grapes, whether it be we pickle them or whether we use them in some sort of mustard or we use them on a dessert or you roast them. Yeah. I mean there's all kinds of ways that you can um, use grapes. Mm -hmm. Well, Okay, so what are we going to make today? Crispy pork cheeks with some charred cabbage and duya vinaigrette and some pickled grapes. So and these are pickled? Yeah. These so, are delicious. So I could, there's a they add a, a flavor. Crunch, a little bit of sweet, also a little bit of uh, a little bit of like depth of sort of spice and uh, yeah. and then also at the same time some acidity. We're gonna start with the vinaigrette. Uh, we're gonna use uh, what's called anduya and it's uh anduya um, or don't ya. And what is anduya exactly? Anduya is a basically a fermented salami. I'm gonna get this going on. And this kinda, is gonna be part of our vinaigrette. This is gonna be part of our vinaigrette. I mean, you've obviously heard of like, you know, a bacon vinaigrette, you know, on a spinach yeah, salad. This sure. is the same sort of concept. Same. Josh adds some shallots and a touch of oil so the onions can simmer until they caramelized. A splash of sherry vinegar, and we have our vinaigrette. You have the base of like a little bit of vinegar, a little bit of fat, a little bit of caramelization with the with the salami. Got a little basic vinaigrette. All right, so, so we got that done. Yeah. Now it's time for those pork cheeks. So we're gonna just sear these really quick and get a nice little crust on them, and then I'm just gonna kind of start adding everything. Adding and to me, that's I love this style of cooking where you have everything built in one. Because typically yeah. when I eat, I'll mix a lot of stuff together. I find that the most satisfying because it. Frankly, that's the way it ends up in your mouth anyways, so. Yeah, exactly. I'll go into the yeah. same place. Yeah. <laughs> Time to add some charred Napa cabbage, chopped red cabbage, and some orange zest. Yeah. No, it's too much. No, I'm yeah. just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> our dish is looking good, but we can't forget the tasty secret ingredient, our pickled grapes. And the grapes I kind of like to leave relatively um, not, not cooked. Okay. I want them sort of, uh, so you get that crunch. Yeah. I don't want them to be raisins. Sure. You know, I want them right. to have that element of. And it's a mix of red and green that you're using. Yeah. Time to add our Induya vinaigrette, a pinch of salt, a toss or two, and it's time to plate. When people taste this, are they surprised by the grapes? Um. Yeah. I mean, we do so many pickled items here mm -hmm. that um, it's kind of part of. It's who you are. I forgot this part. A little bit of fresh herbs at the end, just okay. to kind of like fold in there yeah. just a little bit. Um, so it's just, you know, for lack of a better way to put it, it's a pile of food. Um, <laughs> Josh tops off his pile of food with a pork gloss. And so that's our charred cabbage, pickled grapes, and pork cheeks dish. Awesome. Yeah. Finally, it's time to dig in. Get a grape in there. No, I. Mm -hmm. mm. Those grapes are amazing with the pork. Mm -hmm. You kind of need that, don't mm -hmm. you? Yeah, it would, be, the, it would be too heavy mm -hmm. without it, I think. I, I don't think I've ever heard of pickled grapes before, but I have another grape. To get the recipe for Westward's crispy pork cheeks with Anduya vinaigrette and pickled grapes, head over to wagrone.com. Did you know that the domestication of grapes dates back to about 6,000 BC? This means that grapes are one of the oldest cultivated crops and that humans have a long and rich tradition with this tasty little fruit. Here in the United States, Washington is the second leading producer of all grape varieties. And in 2015, the grape industry alone contributed about $300 million to our state economy. Grapes can be found in a variety of colors, including green, yellow, pink, purple, or even black. And like most other fruit, grapes are relatively high in sugar, which is why they are so useful for making juice, jams, and of course, wine. But grapes contain many other beneficial nutrients, 
Among those are resveratrol, which can be found in the skin of the grape and is a type of antioxidant that promotes a healthy immune system to help us fight off colds or other viruses. And the oil derived from grape seeds is rich with vitamins and nutrients, including omega-6 fatty acids, which our body uses to help maintain normal blood pressure, lower inflammation, and many other beneficial processes. So the next time you find yourself in the produce section at the grocery store, you can be sure that grapes are both a delicious and healthy choice for you and your family. Coming up, we're getting a behind-the-scenes tour of Welch's to see how Washington grapes are used to make their delicious grape juice concentrate. It smells really good. Yeah, I love grape processing. And we'll be in the second harvest kitchen using grapes to make a classic with a twist, PB&J pancakes. Hey, let's go! Grapes are one of those perfect fruits that just has the right size for snacking on the go. But just like us, not all grapes are the same. This is the sapphire grape. It's a little bit longer than you might be used to. And when our friends here at Table 13 in Spokane pair this with a Labanas spread, some quinoa, and put it on some bruschetta, it'll remind you that grapes just aren't for wine. Friend, do you enjoy grapes? I love grapes. I love grapes. You love them? I do. You do? Yes, I do. What yeah. are some ways that you enjoy grapes? Uh, plain off the vine. Anything from a good wine to, you know, <laughs> fresh right off the vine. I actually really like them roasted. Well, everyone loves wine. I have this thing where I peel them. Okay. And then I'll eat them peeled. So you don't like the skin of the grape? No, I do like it, but every now and then I switch it up. Well, I have this incredible little dish here from Table 13. It's uh, made with sapphire grapes. Have you ever seen those before? I have not. They're a little, uh, little different shape than I'm used to. They don't look like normal grapes you see in the store. Have you ever seen these guys before? I have not. They're beautiful. Aren't they cool looking? Yeah, they are pretty cool looking. Why don't you take one of those? Hey. Give it a try. Very pretty. I'm going to try one with you. Okay. So here we go. Cheers. Here we go. Well, you think it? Good. Ooh, that the eyebrows going up signifies that was pretty good. Very, very good. Very, very good. They're very sweet. Good with the crunchy quinoa. Describe what you're tasting there for me. Sweet from the grape, a little savory from the bread. It's a, it's a really good uh, little bite. I I'd order a pile of that. Yeah, <laughs> a yeah. whole pile not, of it. Not even just one, <laughs> just yeah. a pile one of mountain, it. One mountain, whatever that is. I'm at the Welch's plant in Grandview. Washington provides the majority of grapes used in all those famous Welch's products we know and love. I visited with Senior Operations Manager Brad Bigalk to talk about this local facility. This location is a bulk facility for Welch's. In a typical season, it could be well, anywhere from 100 to 110,000 tons. And so that produces roughly anywhere from 20 to 22 million gallons of juice. Um, the two facilities here uh, represent 22 million gallons, which is the largest juice tank farm in all of North America. So you're gonna show us yeah, we're gonna, a little bit how it's all made. Absolutely. Right? Brad led me inside for a tour of how their grape concentrate is uniquely processed and shipped all over the world. Whoa! Wow, that's a lot of juice. Yeah, so basically what's happening is after the grapes have been crushed and the stems removed, it gets pumped over to what we call a slurry tank. It smells really good. Yeah, it's, I, I love grape processing. It, it has got a great smell to it. I learned how adding cellulose helps in the juice pressing process. What cellulose does is it, it actually acts as a thickening agent. So when it gets put up to the press, it allows a body, it, so when it gets pressed, more juice comes out from the solids. Can I drop this in? Yeah, absolutely. After the cellulose is added, the juice is sent to a drag screen. This process uses brushes to push juice out of the grape solids. So you are getting absolutely every last bit of flavor yes. and juice yes. out of those grapes. Correct. The solids are then sent to another juicing process, the unique vertical screw press. So this pressing part is important to Welch's, right? Absolutely. This is really what distinguishes Welch's is a grape juice processor and what makes us unique is solids that come off the drag screen and it's further pressing it down so we're getting all the extra 
uh, juice, color, and flavor um, extracted. And so then all the cellulose that was added is 100% of it's removed. This is the remaining solids that come out of the press. And so you can see the majority of it of it is the cellulose. Hey, yeah. After the press, the juice is sent to another process called concentrating, where all that water is removed, making an all-natural, pure concentrate that is used to make different grape juice products. The concentrate is poured into drums, sealed, and then transported by rail and semis to Welch's bottling facilities, as well as international markets. And they go out to the world. And then they go out to the world, and you know, all over Europe and Asian markets. So, we like that. Yeah, we do too. Yeah, well thank you so much for oh, the you're tour. Welcome. It was it was fascinating. It was oh, really cool. Absolutely. And now you're we welcome. smell really good. Yes, we do. <laughs>
to Welch's a grape juice factory and got to see how they process the grapes and how they make them into juice concentrate. Oh, how neat. Yeah, it was really, really cool. <laughs> and it smelled really good. While Kristen works on the syrup, I add a peanut butter flair to our pancakes. Peanut butter chips. <laughs> and I didn't eat all of them, almost though. <laughs> They're still, you saved a few for mm -hmm. later. I saved a few. <laughs> Once my pancakes are cooked and Kristen's grape syrup is ready, it's time to give our PB&J pancakes a try. I say we go like this, because you know. Get a little fair. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Again. I love that syrup. It's like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It is, for breakfast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That syrup is amazing. Isn't it delicious? And you don't have to do anything to it, just add some cornstarch. Yep, no sugar or anything. Mm -hmm. Just let it be natural and good. Delicious, beautiful. It's a great idea. Juice. To get Kristen's PB&J pancake recipe, head over to wagrone.com. To get high quality grape juice and wine, it all starts right here in the vineyard with high quality grapes. That's it for this episode of Washington Grown. Thanks for watching.